This is the first demonstration of using Oracle Select AI to be able to query not just data in our database and in our tables and objects, but also being able to reach out to the LLM and being able to pull back some additional information. Now, there'll be additional videos that will look at some of the more advanced features in relation to this, but this is just the first one to go through a few examples to be able to see what is and isn't possible. So check out the, the notes in the, in, in the link to, to this video um, and you'll be able to get um, the links to the blog posts that kind of go through uh, the examples in more detail. So the first thing I need to do is as the administrator of uh, the database, I need to grant the Brendan schema. So we have a Brendan schema that I'm going to be using for these demonstrations. And I need to kind of give it permissions to send some HTTP commands to uh, the OpenAI uh, API. All right, so, so that's kind of the first thing I need to do. So that's opening up the database to be able to allow me to send commands to that particular location and being able to receive uh, the results from it. So there's a way of being able to protect the security of it because the database is kind of shut down, kind of boxed off uh, with no connections. So we need to open these up. Now, in, in reality, using um, the grant of least privilege is that you know maybe I need to set this up only at certain points in time. But, but that's kind of a, a story and a discussion for another day. So when I go over to my uh, Brendan schema is that I need to set up my cloud credential and then I also need to set up the, the profile. Now and within the profile is, you know, I'm taking uh, some of the tables from the sales history schema and being able to pass that on. You know, we'll look at a, a, another example of, of data within my own schema to be able to, to look at that. So once we do, the, do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to uh, set that profile. And once I set that profile, then that sets up that connection to it. Now I also have a connection to Cohere as well. So I can actually do the exact same commands using the Cohere um, uh, interface. So the first few commands that we have is, you know, let's have a look at some kind of um, generic ones, which is going to be um, just querying. We're not querying the database. We're just going to query some of the typical kind of things, you know, can the LLM actually answer this? Now, a lot of these kind of questions might be based around, say, Ireland, so that's where I live. So who's the president of Ireland? So we get to see you know, the president is called Michael D. Higgins. You know, what role does NAMA play uh, within Ireland? You know, NAMA was set up after the 2008 kind of crash to kind of manage a lot of the, the bad debt and so forth from the different banks and financial institutions. And has been involved in a lot of kind of development work uh, and building work uh, ever since. So we get to see a more kind of detailed uh, uh, description um, of, of that particular one that we want to be able to see. And then we can get on to kind of looking at more generic questions on, you know, what are the, what's the annual revenue of Oracle? Um, it comes back that. <coughs> now, what we see is that, you know, the information we get may not be 100% up to date because, it's, you know, all of these large, large language models are based on data from a particular point in time. OK, now we have had other financial reports um, since 2021. All right. But, you know, the LLM isn't aware of it. All right. And that's when a lot of the LLMs have been kind of built up to his data up to that particular point in time. So we do need to be a little bit careful of how we actually uh, kind of use this kind of information to be able to kind of gather some results out of it. OK. Um. So if we can get the, the largest one, so we can have the different ones there. So it's saying AWS is the is the largest, you know, followed by Azure and, and Cloud, and then following that is typically Oracle is kind of listed. So as you can see, we can we we can um you know do lots of different things in relation to this, like querying the LLM. Now here's an example of an hallucination. So it's you know if it can't actually determine you know what you can actually do, then it'll come back with a message like this. You know, and depending on which database you're using, you know, you may get a slightly different kind of um, uh, 
information. So this is where it's not sure that answer or it tries to make something up, but isn't you're kind of not kind of based on it. And we'll get to see some other examples of that in, in a few moments. And then, you know, what are the benefits of using Oracle Cloud? So we're just going to get the generic kind of, you know, cloud is wonderful kind of scenario. You know, on the day I recorded this video, we had the Azure outage. So, you know, you know, it also has kind of disadvantages as well, but maybe that's where, you know, the hybrid cloud kind of comes in. Now, within the SH schema, you know, we have a number of different tables, right? So these tables are the ones that I've listed out here. So we have customers, sales, products, uh, countries, channels, promotions. So can I actually use natural language to be able to query that data? Now, I'm not explicitly naming those tables in my kind of natural language, but that's what I've sent to the LM, so through the RAG, you know, being able to deduce that information. So, so the first one is, you know, can you tell me how many customers exist? You know, we can run that. We get a hey, just fifty-five thousand. You know, okay, that's that's not so bad. You know, how many customers exist by country? Um, you know, and we wanted to order, right? So this is an example of hallucination. You know, or one example of it is that it doesn't necessarily understand what it's being asked. So this is where kind of care is needed and how you kind of go about kind of structuring all of these. And then we can go on and you know query the data in in a few other kind of different ways. You know, depending on your questions. So we either get answers or we don't. Um, but you know just because you know we don't get an answer or an hallucination you know uh, it doesn't know what to do it uh, doesn't mean that the data doesn't exist it's about how you've actually kind of phrased uh, the question and in this particular example is you know can you find the top three baby boomer uh, big spenders which is kind of an interesting thing so that's particular kind of people who were born during a certain period in time is you know maybe based on the dates of birth within our data set is we can actually kind of determine all of that and here's another example of of one that kind of doesn't work but you know kind of based on the description it should do maybe you know what is our best selling product by country right you know we do have a, a table called products you know we do have a table called sales you know and, and countries you know you think it, it'd be able to work it out but in this particular case um it wasn't where if we kind of go into something that's a little bit more kind of detailed you know we can actually get um uh, details of, of being able to kind of produce all of that okay and this is kind of another example or a different example of hallucination you know which customer is the biggest it's a bit ambiguous about what does that actually mean. So it's, it effectively just brings us back every customer, right? Uh, or, or most of the, the customers. And we get some kind of uh, a slight duplication there as well. But, you know, this is where we need to be careful of, of the usage of, of this kind of uh, technology to be able to answer our queries and so forth. So that's the end of the first demonstration of kind of some basic usage of uh, using select AI, AI to query uh, the LLM, but it's also been able to query some of the data within our database.